Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, that recording progress never gets old, does it? So I hope everyone is uh, ready to go and get discussing and listening to all things active travel. So firstly, a very happy new year. And um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today and tuning in. And joining the first best practice bite size webinar brought to you by Scottish Student Sport for 2022. So today's webinar is focused on active and sustainable travel. And we are joined by a fantastic expert panel who we'll be hearing from and given the opportunity to ask questions to. So today we have Patrick Harvey, the Scottish Greens co-leader and MSP for Glasgow, Minister for Zero, Zero Carbon uh, Building, Active Travel and Tenants' Rights. We also have from Sustrans, Kate Lessinger, Project Officer for Way to Work, and Adam Kesby, who is Project Officer in the Workplaces team at Sustrans. And the last but not least, we also have Robin Warburton, who is Senior Development Officer at Path for All and leads on Smarter Choices, Smarter Places. So thank you all to our panel again for joining us today. We're so happy to have you with us. And I'm really excited to hear from each of you and have you answer questions from our members and partners who are here today. So to celebrate our new strand of development at Triple S within the Triple S strategy, which is Active Health, we wanted to kickstart the new year by discussing a wide range of topics on active travel. With sustainability as one of Triple S's values and active travel increasingly part of sustainability agenda, Today's webinar will cover the light of the benefits of active travel, practical things that you can do to create change within your organisation or institution, and why active and sustainable travel is important to Scotland's colleges and universities. We will hear from each of our panel that we have with us today before we open the mic to questions. So if I can encourage you all to use the chat function throughout today's webinar, and ask any questions along the way or take notes of any that you may have, then we'll have the opportunity at the end of the webinar to ask these questions and hear more from our panel. But to kick things off in style for this webinar, I'm going to hand over to Patrick, who will share news on the government's agenda for active travel over the remainder of current parliament. So, Patrick, if I can pass over to you and we will take it from there. Well, thanks very much indeed, Megan, and thanks to, to all of you for the invitation to, to take part in today's discussion. Um, obviously, it's an agenda that I'm very excited about, but I'm delighted that Scottish Student Sport is, uh, is interested in this as well, because everything that we cover under this umbrella term of active travel um, has a role in transport policy and in, in in making the kind of places and communities that we live in. It has a role in recreation and it has a role in sport as well. Uh, and I think it's really important that we see beyond the, the, the sort of silo mentality of, of seeing uh, active travel only or seeing cycling, walking, wheeling, whatever, uh, only in one or other of those, those kind of categories. They, they interact and they affect each other. So, you know, as we, as we know, in a couple of years, there's gonna be a, a huge uh, sporting event, the, the Cycling World Championship coming to, to Scotland, that's an opportunity not just to in, increase people's ability to take part in, in cycling as sport, but also to talk about the role of cycling and active travel within transport policy and within communities. Uh, universities and colleges, as, as you said, have got a hugely important role uh, as well in uh, making sure that we remove those barriers to people being active in their daily lives, as well as uh, using uh, what I like to call active travel in sport or recreation as well, and not seeing that there's a, there's a division or a barrier between those. Um, I'm someone who, um, you know, grew up using a, a bike to get about. And, you know, I think a great many young people, uh, before they have other options, before they've either got the money uh, to use public transport or the, the license to, to use uh, a car, will find that the, a bike is the the easiest, the healthiest, and the cheapest way to become active and to be able to get out and about. 
Uh, and when I moved away to uni to go to uni in, in Manchester, uh, that was the busiest bus route in Europe, the route that I had to travel between where I lived and where the university was. Uh, and it was frightening and it was unhealthy and it was polluted. Uh, and yet, even after that experience, when I moved back to Glasgow, Glasgow seems far too scary a place to cycle. We've got a long way to go if we're gonna change our communities in Scotland, urban and rural, and make them feel safe and accessible for people uh, to cycle. You know, I, I got over that that fear of uh, of how dangerous it felt to, to be on a bike in, in Glasgow in the in the city. Uh, I got over that, but not everybody does. Uh, and a great many people who could still get a huge benefit uh, in terms of their health, uh, reducing their environmental impact, being more accessible, uh, being more able to, to access the things that they need sustainably, but also saving money uh, as well, because it's the, the cheapest cheapest and to, to me, I think the most fun way to move about uh, a city as well. There are so many more people who could benefit from that, but we need to invest uh, if we're going to see that progress. Other cities and other countries in Europe have done that. It takes sustained investment in the infrastructure, as well as removing the social barriers uh, to people using active travel. So that's what we're committed to throughout this parliament, a steady increase in the budget that's being spent on active travel, uh, until it reaches 10% of the overall transport budget. Uh, and we've been making those increases all the way along. We need to review how we're delivering it because if we're gonna deliver active travel investment on that scale, it probably needs to be done in new ways. Uh, and we need to be supporting both local communities, uh, organizations within communities like uh, educational establishments, uh, as well as the voluntary sector to direct and to make sure that we're, we're investing that in the right way and depolarize some of it as well, because active travel infrastructure is so prone to being manipulated opportunistically by uh, you know, politicians who'll talk about bike lanes or talk about taking away parking spaces as though it's the worst thing in the world. Actually, once you do this, it's incredibly popular stuff. Once you make these changes, uh, people like it when, when you see that working in their community. But we need to get, a, get away from the idea that these become polarized uh, and sort of politically opportunistic kind of uh, issues uh, in local communities. And actually, I think in many ways, that means empowering people at a local community level to, to make their own decisions uh, about how uh, these aspects of how we move about can change. Um, I'll leave it there for the moment. I, I know we want to leave lots of time for questions, uh, but I'm very excited at the, the agenda that we've got and the, the ability to ramp up the investment in this change. I want to do it in a way uh, that works for every type of community in every uh, every part of Scotland. So thanks very much for your interest. Uh, and I, I look forward to the discussion. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's, um, it's great to hear a little bit about your journey with active travel from your time at university through to where we are now and hearing about the positive direction that it's going in. So um, we're now going to pass over to a presentation that was pre-recorded by Kate and Adam from Sustrans. I think we are all uh, empathetic with the Wi-Fi situation at everywhere everybody is in the country at the moment, including my own. Um, but I'm gonna let Neil, um, my colleague, uh, share his screen and um, put the presentation up for you all to listen to. And yeah, without further ado, I will let Neil share his screen and pass over so that we can hear an overview of active travel and key ways to create some change in your own establishment. So, Neil? Hopefully you can see that now. Hi everyone, um, it's Kate and Adam here from the Workplaces team at Sustrans Scotland. Uh, really happy to be here today. We're going to be talking about all things active and sustainable travel. So just a quick kind of overview of what we will be covering today. Um, we're going to do a kind of quick back to basics on what, what actually is active and sustainable travel. What does that mean? What does it mean for you and why is it important for Scotland's colleges and universities and other organisations that I know are present here today? Um, what are the benefits of active and sustainable travel? Um, then we're going to try and kind of zoom in on you know, what are some of the key practical things that you can be doing right now to create change within your organisations? 
Um, and how can you go about this? So where can you find funding opportunities? And where can you find resources and other inspiration for you to be able to take action? Um, so a useful way to kind of frame how we approach active travel is um, to use Transport Scotland's sustainable travel hierarchy, um, which comes from the National Transport Strategy. This is a great tool when it comes to decision making and implementing changes within your institution or your organization. So as you can see here, the hierarchy prioritizes um, active travel, so walking and wheeling and cycling um, in the first instance. And then as we move down the hierarchy, we go on to consider public transport, um, so things like trains and buses, and then onto shared modes of transport, such as bike shares, could be lift shares or um, things like taxis. Um, so we'll be talking about active travel through this lens today um, and under the kind of general active and sustainable travel umbrella. So as we know, whilst active travel is definitely suitable for everyday short journeys like the commute and oftentimes local business travel. We also need public transport and shared transport modes to support the important transition away from our reliance on the car. So next slide and pass over to Adam. So why is this important? So domestic transport accounts for more than 25% of Scotland's carbon emissions and road transport is responsible for the largest share of our transport emissions. Over 50% of journeys between one and two kilometres are made by car. Walking, cycling, public and shared transport are already zero carbon or low emission solutions that we can start implementing right now. Facilitating active and sustainable travel can help organisations drastically reduce their direct and indirect emissions. And a quick shout out here, to the carbon literacy projects. If you can get on some carbon literacy training, then go for it. I think EAUC Scotland are running it with Keep Scotland Beautiful for universities and colleges. And I've put a little link in the presentation for people to follow up on that. But it's not just carbon. There's lots of benefits of participation um, in active and sustainable travel, which perhaps you'll be familiar with with respect to how they match to sport. So we've got individual benefits like improved physical and mental health, um, it's pro-social, it's cost effective, usually cheaper. There are workplace benefits too, like reduced absences, lower turnover, higher morale, increased productivity. It's a cost effective solution to limited car parking spaces as well. And there's increasingly a reputational benefit as well. You want to be known as a sort of institution that facilitates active travel. And again, we've got these larger structural benefits, reduced congestion, improved air quality, air quality reduce carbon footprint and acceleration towards net zero goals and reduce pressure on healthcare providers like the NHS with a general improvement in public health. So if you need the business case for making a change that makes it easier for people to walk, wheel and cycle, then get in touch and we can share some good quality summaries and academic research. But what can you do to create change? Now, to some extent, this depends on your role within your organisation, but first, you want to think about where your influence is and where your impact on transport emissions comes from. Is the impact due to business travel, the commute, supply chain and deliveries, journey students make for sport to fixtures, for example? And here there may be some quick wins. For example, you can demonstrate demand for more cycle parking provision to your site. Perhaps you can repurpose a car parking space. What does your procurement process look like for transport? If you have a team of 15 people to move, are you hiring a 68 seater bus? That's a real life example. Um, can your department support a local cycle courier service to do deliveries? Or can your department use a cargo bike themselves rather than a van? There's a lot of support and funding for these kinds of changes from organizations, including structured programs like Paths for All's Walk at Work Award and Cycling Scotland's Cycling Friendly Campus Award. There are also no cost initiatives you can champion to. What part do you have to play in facilitating a culture that makes it easy to walk, wheel and cycle? Scottish Student Sport were telling us last week that they have a workplace culture that facilitates walking meetings. And this is something that can be maintained even when working from home. Is there a community around active travel at your institution? And is there a way to join it or support it to make it better networked and more effective at facilitating improvements? 
For example, Sustrans runs the Scottish Workplace Journey Challenge in March each year. Some workplaces that participated last year created online communities to share what sort of active commutes they, would they were taking and encourage each other. It's a free, friendly competition between workplaces and departments to see who can save the most carbon by switching to more sustainable travel modes. And some places get really into it. So here, National Libraries of Scotland started some Twitter beef with the National Galleries of Scotland. This initiative, like many others, is featured on Kate's Way to Work website. Over to you, Kate. <laughs> that sounded like I like own the website, my website. Um, yeah, so you'll find loads of stuff just like the journey challenge on way to work and um, what is way to work i hear you ask well um it is a scotland-wide partnership project that's um led by sustrans um, and we're funded by transport scotland and uh, there are 15 partner organizations and um, at the moment so the main output and focus of the project is the way to work website so this website is a one-stop shop for active and sustainable travel information for workplaces in scotland the aim of the site is to make it as easy as possible for Scottish workplaces across sectors, whether that's, you know, an individual employ employee or for an, from an employer's perspective, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to find support and be able to take actions. So on the site, you can find useful resources and loads of information on funding and facilities, training opportunities, various awards like the Walk at Work Award, like Adam mentioned, and challenges um, like the Journey Challenge that Adam mentioned there, um, travel plans, behaviour change approaches and the climate emergency. You'll also be able to be able to discover case studies um, as well as news and upcoming events. Um, as a way to work partnership, we also host our own events to support workplaces in Scotland. So, for example, in October last year, we hosted a webinar on the climate emergency and transport, how workplaces can be part of the solution. Um, and we had Mr Harvey kindly come along and speak at that, which was great. Um, and you can find a recording of this and loads of other resources on the website in the climate section. So I would encourage you to take a look. And just to show you who the, who the rest of the partners are, as you'll see, the partnership is quite diverse. Um, it includes organisations who work across the transport spectrum. Um, for example, we've got cycling organisations, walking organisations and train and bus companies. One of our partners you'll notice is Paths for All. So, and we've got um, Robin here today from Paths for All, who's going to give you more details about their funding programmes on offer. I also wanted to highlight our way to work pledge. So we recently launched this pledge as part of our climate emergency work. So we're asking workplaces across Scotland to pledge their support for active and sustainable travel. So Scottish Student Sport have actually already made their pledge, which is brilliant. And I'd really encourage you all to join them in pledging on behalf of your own institution or your own organisation. This can be a chance for you to shout about what you might actually already be doing to champion active travel and sustainable travel. Or equally, if you're looking for that bit of impetus to get going on your journey, so to speak, it might be the catalyst you need for starting more of a conversation around us at your work. It really can't be underestimated how important transport is as a key area of action for us here in Scotland if we're to reach net zero by 2045. So, um, do check it out on the website for more information and hopefully see some of your pledges coming in. And lastly, just to mention that you can stay up to date with Sustrans on social media um, and also with way to work on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. We've got a mailing list that you can feel free to join now by scanning this lovely QR code. It's very high tech now. Um, and if you join that, you'll be the first to find out about upcoming webinars and other events. Um, and things like the Sustrans Workplace Journey Challenge happening in March. So yeah, um, as Adam mentioned earlier, we would really love to hear from you. So do get in touch if you have any questions or if you're looking for specific support on building up a business case for this. Um, we're both super impressed and enthused to, to hear that active travel is a new and important strand of um, strategic work for Scottish student sport. So we hope that what we've covered today will be somewhat useful to you all. But yeah, do get in touch if you have any more questions or you just want to find out more. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Adam. And um, oh my God, Sarah. 
Adam and Kate for that presentation. That was great. Um, also, the power of a QR code on Zoom these days is quite something. I never thought we would be at this point, but really, it's great. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for that insightful presentation. That was uh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, and also for encouraging us to think and look at easy, implemental ways to encourage more people to be active um, with their travel. And also looking at the importance of the physical and mental benefits, not just for employees and employers, but students across the country as well, um, just through active travel. Um, if you didn't see, Kate had posted in the chat the link to the carbon literacy training. So please um, check that out as well as the Way to Work website that she also posted in the chat. So lots of options there for you to have a look through in your, your spare time. Um, but a nice segue which Kate did introduce, we next have Robin from Pass for All, who is going to speak to us a bit about grant funding programmes and um, previously funded projects as well that you can hear a little bit more about. So I will pass over to Robin. Um, and yeah, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Megan. I'll just share my screen to get this presentation up just now. And we'll start it. Excellent. So yeah, thank you very much um, for inviting Pass for All to, to talk this afternoon. And um, we're looking forward to kind of sharing more information about our funding program and any sort of questions that, that come out of that as well. And um, so I'm I'm Robin Warburton. I am the senior development officer for Smarter Choices, Smarter Places Open Fund, um, which is a grant program hosted by Pass for All and funded by Transport Scotland. Um, so I'll start just just by giving a, a brief overview of Pass for All for those who may not be familiar with with the charity. Then I'll go into giving a, a more kind of in-depth overview of the Smarter Choices, Smarter Places Open Fund, the criteria for that. And then some examples of projects um, that we funded in higher education institutions over the last um, year or so. And then I'll finish just giving you a bit of information about Pass for All's uh, workplace walking challenges and awards as well. So essentially, Pass for All, we are Scotland's national walking charity. And our remit is to significantly increase the number of people who choose to walk in Scotland whether that's for health or active travel to everyday destinations. So we really work to create more opportunities and better environments, not just for walking, but also for cycling, wheeling and other activities to help make Scotland a more active, prosperous and greener country. And so to achieve this, we support the delivery of local projects that encourage increased physical activity, which includes the travel behaviour change as part of this. Um, so our work is basically broken down into four main streams. Um, so the team I, I sit on is active travel, and that's um, where we kind of deliver the Smarter Choices, Smarter Places programme. So Smarter Choices, Smarter Places is an outcomes-based behaviour change programme. It's funded by Transport Scotland and now in its seventh year. The aim of the fund is simply to get people out of their cars and travelling more sustainably for their everyday journeys. So it aims to kind of really help cut our carbon emissions and improve our air quality. It will also help reverse the trend towards sedentary lifestyles and tackle health inequalities as well. So how does it all work? So Transport Scotland gives Pass for All an annual grant to run the Smarter Choices, Smarter Places programme. Um, within this, there are two different grant funding streams. So we have the Local Authority Fund and the Open Fund. So the programme was initially only for local authorities, but it widened in 2018 um, to include public, third and community sector organisations through the Open Fund. So five million is offered out to Scotland's 32 local authorities based on their population and 2.5 million is available to the public and third sectors. It is um, revenue funding, so it can't be used towards capital costs such as infrastructure, and that includes things like upgrading and um, repair, maintenance or creation of, of things like footways, paths, bikes, bicycle lanes and so on. So basically you can't use it to build things is, is the easy way to explain it. Um, so when um, projects are looking to apply for funding, um, they have to kind of determine what activities you'll deliver as part of this and 
sort of give consideration to our programme outcomes. So because it is a behaviour change programme, we have aligned our outcomes and kind of based them on the trans theoretical model of behaviour change. So you'll see here that we kind of uh, move through the stages of behaviour change. We start at the bottom with pre-contemplation when people are maybe not ready or, or aware to kind of make um, any changes to their behaviour. So underneath here, we've tied this to the outcome. There is an increased evidence base to support sustainable travel interventions. And this typically involves projects that deliver activities such as feasibility studies or they're producing reports and things as well. On to the next stage, we move up to contemplations. This is when people are thinking about kind of getting ready to change their behaviour. And you'll see here, we've also tied this to the next outcome, which is people's knowledge about sustainable transport choices increases. So generally, people working towards this outcome will be delivering things like travel maps, um, running campaigns and social media information, things like that kind of fall under this outcome. Next, we go on to preparation. So people are thinking about actually, you know, we're intending to make that action, that actual behaviour change. So this is things like um, active travel hubs tend to kind of fall under this category. And then finally, we move up to the action stage where we can see we have our three um, kind of primary outcomes at the top here. So this is generally for things like um, cycle hire, e-bike initiatives, maybe things like school walking initiatives. And um, there's a whole host of activities that can fall under this. So this is when people have actually made that behaviour change and they're now travelling more actively and sustainably. So basically, all projects, whether they are open fund or local authority funds, have to kind of demonstrate how they will deliver against one of, of these programme outcomes. And just to give you just a rough kind of um, run through the criteria of the open funds. Um, so it, we do have grants available. The minimum amount is 5,000, and this goes all the way up to 50,000. There is a 50% match funding requirement of this as well. However, of that 50%, up to 25% can be in-kind contributions. So this could be things like volunteer time that could go towards that match element as well. As I've said, um, it is revenue funding. So it's not for capital uh, works. And that includes things like buying bicycles and things as well, because there is already funding in place for that through organisations such as Cycling Scotland. If you are successful, um, projects then have 12 months to deliver their work from date of award. Um, and the, within that, they do all their reporting as well. So we have very recently um, transitioned to an online grants management system, Grants for All. So if people are interested in applying to the fund, the first step is to submit a really brief expression of interest via this um, online portal. So we're only lo really looking for around 200 words giving a brief overview of the project, what outcome you'll work towards, who your target audience is, and how it will encourage um, that behaviour change to more sustainable modes of travel. But again, all, all of our guidance notes, um, examples of previously funded projects and their criteria can be found on our Passforo website as well. So, as it is revenue funding, there is a host of activity that we can support. So this is just a wee infographic to give you an idea of some of the activities that have been delivered or could be delivered. Um, it includes things like producing local, map, uh, local maps, showing walking routes, um, it could be holding car free days, taking part in active travel challenges, organising lead walks. Again, the list is endless. Um, we really do encourage projects, you know, to kind of be creative with, with what they want to deliver as well. And it's addressing, I guess, that local needs, you know, what is the need within your local area? What will encourage people to change their, their travel behaviour? So just to give you a, a flavour, I guess, of what other organisations have done uh, previously. So this was a project uh, that we funded uh, for University of Aberdeen and B Cycle. And um, so B Cycle was a community workshop which was hosted in the university and it's worked over the last um, years to kind of improve cycling facilities 
and promote active travel for members of the university and the surrounding communities there as well. And they were looking to kind of establish an active travel hub on campus. So the project's target audience was mainly university staff, but it also included students and local communities who resided in the sort of the prior regeneration zones in need of active travel options as well. So the project was carried out by the active travel coordinator and the active travel assistant and was managed by their transport and waste manager. So the key objectives of this project were to run a series of events um, and campaigns to inspire attitudinal change in our community. They're also carrying out marketing promotion of active travel. Um, as well as the creation of the Active Travel Hub, um, running events, a travel survey, and increasing access to bikes. So they had many events planned, such as led bike rides and led walks, inclusive cycling sessions, bike breakfasts, um, fit for life scheme. However, a lot of this was postponed um, and later modified because of the, the initial COVID-19 restrictions. So instead of establishing a physical hub space, they ended up establishing a virtual active travel hub, um, which was formed by the coordinator and the assistant on campus. So by the end of the project, um, they had delivered a 5K Your Way Challenge, a Fit for Your Future campaign. They delivered several doctor bike and bike maintenance sessions, as well as e-bike trials. Um, they also um, delivered an active travel social media campaign and they added an active travel information section to the university's website. As well as this, they also established an active travel club and an active buddy scheme was set up. <clears throat> and, and quite an interest, interesting one as well was they produced actual walking and cycling route videos around the campus. So staff and students knew how to kind of access those facilities and, and find their way to campus in active and sustainable modes. So by then many people had reported that they'd been more inspired and motivated and supported to start traveling actively as a result of all this activity, with some beginning to travel more actively for their everyday journeys as well. So they had some really great success with that project. And just to give you an idea, this is the just a list of current organizations we are funding. A lot of them use our funding to recruit members of staff, um, and from that they work on things like their travel plans. You'll see there's a lot of training and events that take place as well. Um, again, it is open to interpretation. You know, we're willing to discuss ideas and things with organisations. If you have something you think might fit um, with your audience, we're more than happy to kind of talk through that as well. But this was just to really give you a flavour of what other organisations are doing and what's kind of possible with the funding. And just to make you aware, this is a new website um, as well. Um, so we're working with our active travel partners, we've recently launched sustainabletravel.scot. So essentially it's an interactive one-stop shop for anyone looking to get a walking, cycling, wheeling or sustainable transport idea off the ground. So the site kind of hosts what's on offer from Scotland's key active travel organisations. So it includes information on grants, and um, there's training, advice, ideas and inspiration on there as well. So users simply search what they want to achieve and the site will find funding or advice that meets those needs. So it's definitely worth having a look there to see as a starting point what options are out there for you. And I'll just finish with a wee bit of information on our own kind of bespoke workplace walking challenges and awards. So you may have heard of our step count challenge um, before. So this runs twice a year. We have an eight walk, eight week, sorry, eight walk, eight week spring challenge and a four week autumn challenge. Um, alternatively, you can run your own bespoke challenge for your workplaces as well. And um, that's an option that you can do. And we also have our Walk at Work Award. So the Walk at Work Award um, celebrates employers in Scotland who are promoting everyday walking in their workplace. Um, so it helps um, workplaces with the know-how to, to really kind of foster a walking culture that encourages and supports physical activity at work. Um, and to help you achieve that award, um, there's guidance on planning your project, developing activities, improving facilities and, and signposting to resources as well. Um, I'll put some links for that in the chat as well. Um, but again, all that information can be found on our website too.
I'll finish there. Thank you, Megan. I'll hand back to you and I'll just pop some links in the chat for everybody as well. Brilliant, Robin. Thank you so much. That was, that was brilliant. Really enjoyed that. Um, and especially hearing some best practice examples of, you know, some of the triple S member institutions like the one from University of Aberdeen that you shared and also to see just how many universities and colleges are involved in your work or being funded for specific projects. So I really hope that does encourage some of you who are on the call today to have a look at, you know, what you could look to be doing within your own organisation or institution. So yeah, that was brilliant. Thank you so much again. Now, it's going to be open all mics to our panel with um, some questions that we have teed up. So I am mindful that we have Patrick until around quarter two. Um, so I'm going to come to you first, Patrick, with a couple of questions that have been asked from people on the call today. Um, so the first one that we had in was from my colleague Ailey, and she had asked, what are some of the European examples of good practice that you alluded to? Sorry, I'm just going to wait for a siren to go past my, my front window. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, probably folk who've uh, been to places like um, Copenhagen uh, or uh, quite a number of, of German cities actually wouldn't be surprised if I say that I think uh, we're, we're a long way behind the curve. If we, if we look at what's happening in Paris right now, you're seeing really dramatic, rapid change uh, in a city that's been dominated by quite a toxic car culture for a long, long time. Uh, and it's, it's when you get this willingness to give local leadership uh, and combined with the, the sustained investment to make sure that, uh, that every part of a community begins to feel safe to move around uh, through, through active travel, you, you can make what felt impossible become inevitable. Uh, and if you if you look at some of the pictures of of, of places like Amsterdam, Copenhagen, uh, from the 70s, you see exactly the same horrible congested car culture that that we had at the time, and that they've made different choices uh, than than have been made in this country. Uh, it's not too late to make those choices. It's not too late to to uh, actually to learn from the best of what's been done elsewhere. Uh, and uh, we've been in touch just recently with the, the mayor of Paris on other issues, and we're, we're keen to learn from what's happening there. Um, th there are also uh, uh, there's also a need, of course, to, to think beyond cities and look at areas where um, you know replacing uh, journeys with with active travel options is is maybe more challenging for some people. Uh, if it's about longer distance journeys, if it's about more re remote and rural areas. Uh, but actually, there's still the opportunity uh, to use active travel, even if it's for part of that journey and integrating it with, with the public transport network as well. Uh, so making public transport more affordable, making it join in and link in uh, as part of a network is, is hugely important as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, think we're, I think we're a long way behind a lot of European cities and, and, and European countries on this. But actually, that means that there's loads more lessons around and about us than they had at their time when they started making those uh, those changes. Brilliant, thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm gonna go on to another question that has been asked from Alex at Edinburgh, and it says for Patrick, but also for any of our panelists who would like to um, also add, add in with another. Um, Alex has asked, what might be some of the potential risks to progressing the active travel agenda? Is that to me as well? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> um, well, look, I mean, I, I mentioned polarization uh, in my opening remarks and the way that some of these uh, developments can uh, become local political footballs, if you like. Uh, you know, the, the, the kind of... Um, uh, what's his name? Farage, who you know is, is not someone that I would have much political sympathy with on on any issues. But you know, he started jumping on on uh, active travel infrastructure as though it was just the next political 
uh, you know, issue that he would wanted to, to kick around for a bit and, and, and use really opportunistic, shallow ways of, of engaging with. But it's not only those kind of extreme voices in the political spectrum. Uh, when um, we talked about workplace parking levies, which is uh, a levy uh, on employers, not on individual motorists, it's on employers for, for the, the free parking spaces that they make available at their workplaces. It's a, a me measure that's been used successfully in Nottingham to invest in sustainable and active travel as well. Uh, we, we talked about doing that in Scotland. You got this immense and immediate backlash from the, the usual sort of war on motorist crowd. Uh, and we get the same kind of attitude sometimes with some of the, the temporary active travel infrastructure that was put in uh, during the, the pandemic. Now, some of it was, was great and has been made permanent, and that's fantastic. Some of it might not have been brilliantly designed, but the, the, the challenge that you've got there is how do we make it better? Uh, and I'm afraid in some places the reaction was just how can we rip it out again rather than how can we make it better? Um, so... Yeah, the, 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 the issues around polarisation, the issues around people feeling that this is something being done to them rather than something being done with them, that's what we need to avoid. And if we do this in an empowering way, if we do it in a way that uh, enables people to contribute to positive ideas about how their own local community will develop uh, and make sure that they know that the resources are there to make it work, uh, then I think we're less likely to see this become polarised. Uh, there's always going to be a bit of a right wing backlash about kind of war on motorist stuff. Uh, but, you know, actually, I think a great many people are already well ahead of that. And they want to know that they can they can move about without being dependent on the car for every journey, uh, without being locked into uh, high travel demand and, uh, uh, you know, high cost ways of moving about as well. So, yeah, I think if we if we if we present this as something that's actually liberating as well as fun and healthy and sustainable, uh, rather than just something that's, that's kind of poor faced and finger wagging and, you know, here's the way you change your, your lifestyle, you know. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Patrick. What a robust answer. Um, I think Alex is also quite, quite chuffed for that answer. So thank you very much. Um, before we open the same question up to the rest of the panel, I am very mindful that it is quarter two. And um, I think this is the time that you had to, to jump off the call. But um, if I can just thank you from Triple S and everybody else who's managed to come on the call today for your time and for joining and yeah, just being part of this webinar, it is greatly appreciated. And uh, we will definitely do our bit for tertiary education. In well, once again, <laughs> many thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm sorry I have to jump into the virtual chamber now just ahead of voting at five o'clock. Uh, but uh, I hope we'll have uh, further opportunities to engage on this with you in the future and uh, all the best, all the best for, uh, for the rest of the discussion. Brilliant. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week. Cheers now. So with that question in mind, I'm going to pose it to the rest of our panel if anybody else would like to jump in and add to Patrick's answer. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in, Megan. Um, I guess adding on to sort of Patrick's um, answer as well, is, is important that obviously active travel is inclusive and accessible for all. So trying to re reduce those barriers as much as possible, for example, not everyone may have access to a bike, not everyone may have the skills to cycle. What alternatives are there? Kind of giving them the confidence to go out there and do this. Um, again, there comes that kind of level of um, working with areas of, of deprivation. Then there's the rural and the urban kind of divide as well. So there is a balance, a fine balance, I think. And I think it's kind of working with, with or designing projects that kind of meet that local needs and um, address, address those issues kind of head on um, will help kind of give us a better steer forward and how we can support and, and learn and develop on this as well. Brilliant, thanks, Robin. Um, Kate, is there anything else that you would like to add? I feel like we've had a really great answer on this, but please feel free to jump in with anything oh, else. I feel like those answers were really robust. And like Robin was saying, like each local context is unique and different. And so if you are trying to create a change, then you need to really understand that context in the first place. And if you're facing a lot of backlash um, against certain decisions that you're making, you know, make sure you're actually talking to the people that it will affect and you know their their support can help you actually 
you know, create the change you want to create. So yeah, making sure you have the discussions and understanding where they're coming from. And then you'll likely, you know, come like kind of be able to zoom in on, okay, what really is the problem here? And then, you know, you'll be able to kind of turn it around, I think, by emphasizing the wide spanning benefits that this would have on their life and on their on their community as a whole as well. So I would just add that, but yeah, really robust answers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure Alex is chuffed with the amount of uh, responses we got on that. So, yeah, absolutely. And I liked what you popped in there at the end. And I guess it goes back to that nothing changes if nothing changes. So hopefully we can all do our bit to continue to take it in the right direction. Um, we have a question from Shona from Strathclyde, which says, what will Triple S's uh, role be in relation to active travel initiatives for member institutions? So... As I mentioned at the start of this call, active health is a new area of work that we are really honing in on at Triple and is essentially the lead project that I have taken forward with my role. So this felt at the right time at the start of the year to bring this topic of conversation in, have the right people around the table to discuss it and obviously open up the floor for, for questions that we can then take to improve our area of work around active travel. So you know, this is something that we as an organisation do our best with at the moment, also sustainability being one of our main values. Um, we've been fond advocates of, you know, walking meetings and, you know, encouraging people to use active travel by reimbursing, you know, costs for cycling as opposed to taking like your car or, you know, the train or something, encouraging people to find more sustainable ways to travel. But then using this opportunity to build a culture and make sure that the ways that we are working is, you know, we're practicing what we preach and encouraging others to do the same, as in our members, by sharing these best practice opportunities, putting on these webinars and sharing this information amongst the sector, and then continuing to do more of that um, with our work moving forward. As Kate had mentioned, the pledge around active travel is something that we as an organisation have pledged to, and we'll make sure that we continue to work with the likes of SusTrans and Pass for All to make sure that we are as up to date and, you know, doing our best as an organisation um, instead of, you know, just encouraging people to do it and not doing it ourselves. So it's definitely at the forefront of our work, and hopefully with this new strand of active health um, in our workload it's just going to continue to, to grow bigger and better for us and uh, be as sustainable as we can as an organization. So hopefully Shona that touched on, on your question and answer. I've, I'm getting a wee nod in the screen. So um, yeah, but happy to have further conversations around that and, and you know, also take it into our active health forum that we will be having with Triple S, which you've engaged in already. So yeah, brilliant. Um, I'm happy to open the mic to everybody here as well, if anyone would like to come off mute and ask any questions or add any last ones into the chat whilst we have our panellists still on the call. I'll wait for the awkward silence and, and see if anybody jumps in. <laughs> um, no? Okay. I can hear the countdown clock in my head as we... Uh, as we go on here okay um so maybe just well, to, I think, oh yeah I'm sorry maybe. Megan just to flag that um I saw Adam I don't know if he wants to say it out loud but I saw he put him put a comment in the chat there that is worth pointing out there are considerable risks associating with associated with persisting with business as usual um so that's quite a good technique if you're coming against some uh reluctance um to emphasize actually there are any risks that could come with um, taking forward active travel plans are completely outweighed by the risks of not, um, uh, yeah, taking because it's very much linked to climate action as well. Not just on, you know, everything's interlinked. Not just, not just to do with creating healthier spaces to live in, better working environments. It's also for hitting our climate targets and, uh, yeah, doing the most we can. So I think that's quite a good, useful thing to keep in mind from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Thank you for, for adding that in. Um, okay, well, we are eight minutes ahead of schedule. Prompt, happy with that. Um, so, oh, we've got, Ian's just popped something in the chat just saying that when we slowly move back into offices, it will be 
be present uh, or oh, present a great opportunity for active travel. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully this is, you know, ingrained in our mind at the start of the year. And yes, during your time at work or traveling to and from institutions or even just in your day to day life, just encourage you to think about your what form of transport you are using um, and just embed that into everybody's day to day life. Brilliant. OK, so. I just wanted to take this opportunity on behalf of CLS to thank our fantastic panel again for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure having you involved. And if you don't mind, I'm sure we can share your um, details with our member and member institutions and partners should they wish to you know, get in touch and ask any more questions or explore some of those funding options for their um, institutional organization so yes it was brilliant i've learned a lot and i hope that everybody that's come on the call today has also learned something new or been made aware of a new grant or funding that they weren't available that they weren't um, you know they hadn't heard of from before um or it posed a question in your brain that you can maybe take back to your institution your organization of new ways that you can continue to work or something you can implement into your your day-to-day -day working environment whatever it might be but yes, thank you so much again. As I'd said at the start, this call has been recorded, so it will be available to refer back to um, on our YouTube channel. So please feel free to, to have a listen back or you know, refer back to anything in your own time, should you wish to. But thank you so much again, everybody, for joining today. And I hope you have a topper of a year and it continues to go. Uh, in the right direction. So thank you so much, everybody, and I shall hopefully speak to you soon. Thanks so much.